The standards in the United States for teaching U.S. history are either very explicit on teaching the Holocaust, where they state um, responses to what was happening in Nazi Germany and what was happening in occupied Europe during that time. Those are very explicitly stated in many states. Um, but when you look at other themes, American response, uh, foreign policy response, the rise of fascism, American responses to fascism, if you look at American responses to dictatorships, all of these strands within the elements and standards are very much a part of what we focus on at the museum. It's a very natural fit. Um, pretty much everything that you will see at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum fits in perfectly to support U.S. history teachers um, when you're looking at 20th century history and even the precedents that were set before. Um, you can look at the 19th century. You can look at the role of anti-Semitism. Um, there are so many elements. And then, of course, today, focusing on our responses to genocide since the Holocaust. That is an incredibly important topic to our museum. And so we would encourage U.S. history teachers to look at American foreign policy in trouble spots in places like Darfur, in the former Yugoslavia, in Rwanda, and how we've responded to those situations and how the Holocaust gave us this, I don't want to say opportunity, but it gave us this light on this subject that is still very much with us today. Because our primary focus is on the victims and, and our survivors and their testimonies. But for example, in working with the Teaching American History group a few weeks ago, I focused on some interviews with an African-American athlete, John Woodall, John Woodruff, excuse me, who was a participant in the 1936 Berlin Olympics. And he speaks very eloquently about his experiences in Berlin in 1936, representing the United States and being proud to represent his country and his race. And what he saw there and the euphoria of the crowds in reaction to his gold medal victory, also Jesse Owens, which is a story that many people know very well. And then when he returns home, he speaks about being excluded from the Hall of Fame, from the university where he, that he attended. In looking at that, to show again what we do in a professional development is to show how expansive this history really is. And we use survivor testimony, we use witness testimony, we use liberator testimony, we also focus very much on photos and other primary source documents. And what we really want to do is to complicate the thinking of the teachers who come to us for professional development to show that this history is so complex and so vast in its, in its context from the years that it took place, but what happened in the years before, the decades, the centuries before, and what's happening after.